Hello everybody, MCZX here again covering the G1 Climax 27 and I wanted to address a couple things before we go on to coverage of Night 3 and Night 4. So I noticed some of you wrestling fans may not be familiar with the G1 Climax. In short, it's a tournament. I think you take 12 wrestlers and you put them in one block. You take 12 wrestlers and you put them in the other block. One win equals two points. One draw equals a point for each. And if you can't compete, you just get taken out. That's it. Just how that goes. So, with that being said, you kind of know how it works. I'd Google it to see all the rules and everything. In regards to these videos, the format's about to change right before your eyes. Instead of going over every match, including all the tag team matches, because there's five of them in every show, instead of going over all of those, you might be pressed for time to catch up with everyone else. This is not going to be a review. This is going to be more of a guide with some of my thoughts on the G1. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you if English commentary is available. I'm going to tell you the matches to watch. I'm going to tell you the matches to skip. Some tips, some things to look out for. I'm going to ask you guys what your favorite match was. And then my thoughts on who's going to win the G1. And that's about it. So let's get to night three. Now you had LIJ against Finley and Juice. Don't skip the match because if you watch it, there'll be a nice reason to watch it because it all plays out on night four if you watch this match. Definitely watch the opening match. It's a good one. What you can skip, though, is the Suzuki Gun match. When they take on LIJ, that's Sonata and Bushi, Taichi and Suzuki. I'd skip to the end just to see what Taichi does to Bushi. He rips off his mask. And I think it can set up a potential storyline in the future if, if they go for that. The third match was Bullet Club versus Bullet Club. So you knew it was going to be funny from the jump once I said that. Watch this match, because it is the funniest match of the entire night. I'll give you a little sneak peek. Tom and Chase like Burke Kenny's leg in a funny bit. It's a very funny bit. You should watch that. And it had some tension in the club. Oh, God. I'm even saying th in the Bullet Club. But watch that match. I'm not going to give away who won. But very enjoyable match. Very enjoyable match. You got the time for that. You had the six-man tag with Ten Cozy versus... With Tenkozy and Elgin versus Chaos. That's Okada, Yano, and Gato. And I don't know. I'm on the fence. There'll be some matches that's in the middle. So it's to your discretion. If you have the time and want to watch the match, go for it. If, if you don't and want to get straight to the to block matches, go for it. Go for it. I'm going to leave this one in the middle. You can watch it or you can just skip it. It wasn't like super impressive or special. It was a good match. Good sneak peek into Kojima versus Yano and Elgin versus Okada. But now we come to A block. And a quick tip, if you see an odd number, it's A block matches. If you see an even number, it's B block matches. Okay? So, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to watch all the A block matches. Especially Kota Ibushi versus Zack Sabre Jr., which is my favorite match of the night because, damn it, that's what we should have gotten in the Cruiserweight Classic. And we didn't. What, what potential that could have been for WWE. But then again, what a, what a letdown it would have been as well, because they would both have to sign. And who knows what they would be doing right now. They definitely wouldn't be competing in this. It'd probably be Ricochet and Will Ospreay in, in their place. But, man, this was what we deserved at the CWC, and it was a great damn match. My favorite match of the night, definitely, definitely. Fale versus Tanahashi was great. Ishii versus Makabe was great. It was like the never openweight matches, if you remember... Back last year, Goto versus Nagata was great. The main event was great. All the A-block matches was great. You need to watch every single one of them if you got the time. If not, go to, to like a review and just get the result. You have the time, watch those matches. These are good. These are good. Onward to night four. We have English commentary for the very last time. That's it. It's going to be no more English commentary after night four. It, it, it's all done. So enjoy Kevin Kelly and Don Callis because they're going to be gone in the next video. Just letting you know right now. Makabe, Ibushi, Finley versus Chaos, Goto, Ishii, and Gato. I would tell you to skip the match, but uh, no, skip the match, skip the match, skip the match. It's a nice preview between Makabe and Goto and Ishii and Ibushi, but the match is what you really care about. The tag match is just a sample, and a sample's not going to hold you over their matches are on night five, so if you just want to skip the night five and see those matches, just go there. Just go there. I'd skip it though. Makabe's team won, and Makabe and Goto just continued to brawl after the match, as they should, because that's what they do. 
Goto's just becoming one of them. You have Yoshihashi and Jado, Chaos versus Suzuki Gun, uh, ZSJ and El Desperado. Uh, ZSJ wears black in tag matches and red in singles. Don Callis pointed that out. And you can skip it because ZSJ and Desperado won. Tanahashi and Kitamura versus Nagata and Oka. Kitamura and Oka, two notable young lions. You'll see them a lot in this tournament. Honestly, Kitamura is jacked. He is jacked. Brother, he is jacked. Looking good. He is jacked. What the heck? He is jacked. You can skip the match, though. I didn't write down who won because it was forgettable. Now, on night four, we lost a member of the IWC. Very close member to us. This is the match you will not skip because you will watch it just like everyone else. You've seen the moment in gift form, but it hurts even more when you watch the match. The match I'm talking about is the Bullet Club, Fale, Yujiro Takahashi, and Chase Owens. Versus Los Ingobernables de Japón, Tetsuya Naito, Bushi, Hiromu Takahashi. Now, if you know Hiromu, you know Daryl. We all knew Daryl. He was a wonderful cat who waved us during Hiromu's entrances. And it sucks to know that this is that match. This match is the Death of Daryl match. You've seen it, possibly. Do not skip this match because it's important to the lore of what's going on. And it hurt. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt to watch. It wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. I, I enjoyed the match. Chase Owens is definitely coming into his own. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to look at Fale and be all like, he's one of my favorites. And to know he did that, killed our friend. Took our friend away. It hurt. It hurt so much. And Hiromu looked so sad. So sad at post-match. It hurt all of us. I could see the heartbreak. In his face. But let's move on from that sad bit of news and talk about these B-Block matches. So you had Kojima versus Yano. Listen, you can't really skip this match because it's like a minute long. It's super short. It's super short. Like, unless you don't have a good intentions span, I don't know how you can't watch this match. Well, I don't see the point of skipping it. It's funny. And it's the most entertaining match of the night, even though it's a minute. I don't know how anyone hates Yano. He's a master salesman. He's innovative as hell. He's a genius, and he knows how to work people. And the crazy part is, he really knows how to wrestle if he wanted to, but why do that? He can just cheat people and win. Why the hell would I want to wrestle? He came to evil and Juice, and this is why I told you to watch the tag team match, because Juice had a neck injury from that match. Sorta. Sorta. You have to watch the match to see what it was, but it's something to do with his neck. And it's a huge emphasis on the match. There was a nice shout-out to Hanma somewhere in the match, and it was great. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. You should watch it too. Suzuki vs. Sonata. Ooh, man. Man, 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 man. This is another edition of the Suzuki Masterclass of being a sadist and torturing people. The first person was Kenny Omega, as you all know. Now it's Sonata. And good God, Sonata held his own. Man, he held his own. He does a lot of moves like Kenji Mudo. That's also known as the Great Muda. Well, it's because he was trained by him. He does a better drive-by than Roman. I'll tell you that right now. And Suzuki... Suzuki's stubborn, but I think Suzuki does things just to hurt people. It's hard to talk about these without giving things away. But there was great submission transitions in this match. Back and forth. I may say match of the night. May say match of the night. Yeah, yeah. That was a real good match. Sonata really showed out. I, I may say that was the match of night four. Then you had Omega versus Tonga, aka the leader versus the loyalist. It was the most personal match on the card. And look, it's gonna start off real hot, so don't blink. Just pay attention. Tom has a lot of quotables in this one. I'll give you one. Who the f is the elite? Probably seen that gift form. Tom uh, cut a promo in the middle of the match. A lot of stuff happened. A lot of stuff happened. Uh you should watch it though. Watch that one too. Don't skip. Now you have Okada versus Elgin. Uh uh. This kind of was a low point for me. You would think this match would be awesome, but for some reason it didn't do much for me, man. Like, I personally would skip it if I could go back in time. I would skip it and just go to the end, but you might like Okada and Elgin a lot, so I think you should watch the match, but it seems like it's super obvious where it's going. That's it, guys. That's in a night three and four. Come back for night five and six. Favorite match. Of night three was obviously Kota Ibushi and Zack Sabre Jr. And my favorite match of night four was obviously Suzuki versus Sonata. So, 
What was your favorite matches of those two nights? Let me know in the comments. Everything is in the description. If you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at the Smart Kingdom. All the stuff's down there in the description. Please like, share, and subscribe. Share with your friends. Please give us a like. Hit the like button. Please hit the like button. I like the likes. And we'll see you next time. Later. Bye.